Welcome to Facts for Real Videos. Now let's imagine that humanity is under severe threat from extraterrestrial life. So let's pretend that a huge planet-eating octopus visits our solar system in search of food. Except for Venus, Mars, Earth, Jupiter, and other planets. Saturn consequently, people choose to relocate to the large planet with enormous rings, fortunately. They already possess cutting-edge technology that enables them to take such journeys. So we board enormous aircraft, take off, and fly to Saturn to explore the planet's life. It has no solid ground, making it impossible in and of itself. No chance of the ship landing. In order to compare, here is a giant gas ball that is nine times broader than Earth. Their sizes are comparable to a five-cent coin and a baseball, and the atmosphere of the planet is primarily made up of hydrogen and helium. Therefore, if the ship begins to land, it will soon suffer pressure that it will never hit solid ground and that will increase the deeper it descends. The ship will just be destroyed. Consequently, we are left with only one option, the Saturnian rings. They are composed of rock and ice flying around in various sizes, from enormous to very little. The gas giant at a breakneck pace. They originated from comets that were pushed off course by Saturn's gravity. These heavenly bodies are thrown off track and are crushed by the pressure. These comets shards started to amass around Saturn, forming rings. Currently, some of these particles fly faster than others. Ring C and B follow the D-ring, which is closest to the planet. Then, a significant void known as the Cassini division rings A, F, and E appears. Following this classification makes it very easy to create a ring map. People then walk up to the rings. However, don't dare to touch them. Robotic test capsules are initially sent out to scout. The spot on the E-rig that the robots decide is a good placement. The ship can easily fly there, and the distance between the rocks is actually fairly big. There are enormous rocks and small particles. Houses sized comets and ones the size of an entire mountain. Now the first robot flies up to a big rock at a high speed. Another robot is crushed between two clashing boulders after a baseball-sized stone pierces its body. The third robot slows after being trapped in a hail of jagged icicles. They develop new capsules and new robots this time because they have large engineering workshops aboard their ships. They are constructed from stronger materials. As a result, when the robots return to a large rock, some particles collide with them. But be careful not to breach the defenses. A small station was established by the machine atop a flying rock, where people can reside, but it appears that the station is destroyed by a large piece of asteroids after a few hours. Another tactic is required to scan with large ships. The E-ring's whole surface area and compute. Individuals eventually discover the trajectory of billions of stones after length and calculations. The ideal locations among this mayhem that will endure for a long time. They arrive at their castles and settle themselves on these substantial rocks. They erect stations inside little residences and equip them with strong batteries. The distance between the Sun and Saturn is nine and a half astronomical units. The distance between the Sun and Earth is one unit. As a result, Saturn is a really chilly location, which explains why so much ice is flying around it. But where do you get the power to heat everything up? Huge ships have far too little of it. Solar panels are also useless at this location because of the sun's enormous distance. Therefore, engineers devise a method for producing kinetic energy from flying stones. When the wind drives, it resembles a windmill. These movements are transformed into energy by the fans. Engineers therefore construct solar panels that harness the energy of moving stones. However, it doesn't reduce the speed of rocks because they are still being pulled by Saturn's gravity. People gain access to a source of practically infinite energy in this way. There are trees and plants that produce oxygen on some space stations. Using simply photosynthesis and not sunlight, UV light provides them with energy. Big oxygen tanks are then filled and carried to people's houses. People start moving in. The nearby rings for transportation from one location to another, not much gasoline is required. You can calculate a rock's course, land on it, and wait for it to take you where you need to go. The next one, 
and so on, until you reach the last. As you approach your destination, an increasing number of people disembark from their ships and alight at the rings. The quality of life appears to be improving. However, psychological issues soon emerge as everyone becomes insane from the constant movement in the vacuum of space imagined living on a never-ending carousel. You can't go to the store on foot. No one can go for a walk since it always flies away whenever you want. Even in a space quickly since you might run into a rock that is traveling at fast speed. Planning is not possible at this time. A huge chunk of ice can derail your plans, and computers don't help either. They are unable to determine everyone's paths cosmic bodies rocks frequently fracture and divide into countless smaller ones. Additionally, fresh comets pass by and join the rings. In addition to creating ambiguity, all of this makes people feel anxious. On the rings, it is very gloomy, cold, and lonely. Imagine establishing a foundation on a space object right now. However, your best friend lands on a different one a few miles away, and as a result, a huge icicle increases and crashes into his rock. A few days later, it's speed. It occurs because your friend is too far away. All the time, settling on one of Saturn's moons is the only way to change your life. There are 83 on the Earth. 20 others are yet to have their existence confirmed, while 63 have already been named and confirmed. Some of them are all like different worlds. Among them, Titan stands out as the most likely to be habitable. Its atmospheric pressure is only 1.5 times that of Earth's, and it may contain water. Due to the presence of methane and nitrogen in Titan's upper atmosphere, carbon haze develops there. This moon cannot be studied from Earth. The fact that Titan sails outside of Saturn's rings is the best thing, though. This implies that residents there can live in peace. Similarly to our satellite, Phoebe is also covered in craters. This enormous celestial object is more reminiscent of a massive meteorite. People can choose from a wide range of starting points. During the 200 years spent on ships near Saturn, new life emerged. You would discover everything about Hyundai satellites. However, why did they attempt to survive on the rings? Because this video would be significantly less entertaining and shorter if they had set foot on one of the moons right away, they should have been born inside Saturn's rings. Let's imagine if the planet's gravity snagged a large meteorite that contained frozen water. The most basic living forms were present there. Then, this life began to take on more sophisticated shapes after the eyes. Consider the possibility that the big rock has survived unaltered for hundreds of millions of years. Of course, at this time, humans appeared. First of all, they would be totally different there. Since they wouldn't be subject to gravitational pull, they would grow taller. However, the lack of light would make the skin of weaker individuals paler. But very hardy because of the extremely low temperatures which would roughen people's skin in such biological armor in the absence of gravity. In pursuit of food and water, they would leap from one rock to another. And by the way, the primary issue would be how humanity would survive in space without oxygen. From where would they obtain food? The rings of Saturn are a somewhat scary and desolate region. How could such a complicated life form as the human develop, even in theory, if there aren't even the simplest types of life there? That's all for today. It would be impossible for anyone to appear there. So, thanks if your curiosity was satisfied.